Morning, everybody. We're here in Eli, Manitoba, about half an hour west of Winnipeg, Manitoba. A few hundred miles north of North Dakota. Picking up my load. Here it is. Now, the people here were awesome to strap it down for me. All I have to do is I have to uh, reroute these straps through the rub rail. Can't put them over the rub rail. So they did tie them up real nicely here on this side. I'll have to redo that, but that's okay. I want to make sure I'm legal, that I'm not going to be getting into trouble down the road. This side's a little bit messier, but that's okay. I'm going to redo it anyways, right? And they knew that. So I'm just going to slide this all through the pockets, because you, like I said, you can't have your straps going over the outside of the rub rail. I've hauled this stuff before. It's a great load to have. Very light, simple, but it does have to be tied down a specific way at specific anchor points. Now I'm picking this up on a Sunday. I'm, I'm filming this on a Sunday. So in order for this load to get out today, they're obviously not in the office, it's the weekend. They tied this down for me on Friday, which is awesome. I love it when people do that. They're just my favorite and it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. I love that. So thank you very much if you guys watch. I really appreciate that. We're going to take good care of this. We're going to take this on to Alberta. This load is going just north of Vermilion, Alberta. I've got to be there tomorrow before noon. Won't have a problem. Old Blue is doing good. The truck show yesterday was a lot of fun. I'm still kind of hyped up over it. I love those. I love those kind of events. Like just all these like, just mighty trucks and machines together and everybody that loves the same things that I love all together in one place. And it's just... Oh, it's like one big trucking family, right? It just gets me all on this like trucking high. So I'm all revved up, ready to go. Let's uh, finish tying this up. I just have to take my tarps off from where I have them stored there. I'm going to throw them in here. Right in there. Tie them down in there and we'll be on our way. This thing... Well, I was going to say this thing isn't going to tie down itself. Clearly it will tie down itself. <laughs> but they just tied it down to secure. It's, it's quite light. And if there's a big wind that came through here on the weekend, you don't want this freight falling off. And can you imagine I get here on a Sunday morning and the freight's lying on the ground beside the trailer? Like, what am I supposed to do? They'd have to come back into work on a Sunday and waste their weekend putting this thing back on the trailer. It would probably be damaged. So it, the load would be canceled. And then they're upset. I'm upset. And nobody's happy. And it's a bad Sunday. So they tie it down just so that it doesn't fly off the trailer. Like, obviously, they didn't do this so that you go down the highway like this. <laughs> this is just to keep it neat so that the wind doesn't blow it around everywhere. And great guys. Great guys. Super happy. So let's finish buttoning this down. Let's get out there. Let's head westbound. Let's go to Alberta. Beautiful. Beautiful Alberta. All right, the whole load is resecured. Got my paperwork. You can't go too tight on these things either, right? Because you don't want to bend it. It's very fragile aluminum, so it's got to be just perfect. So our signal and marker lights all working. Tires all have air. Wonderful. ABS light came on when I turned on the ignition. Turned off again and stayed off. Good brake lights, marker lights, and signals working. And there's no audible air leaks. Fantastic. We're ready to rock and roll. Roll and rock. Got all the straps inside the rub rail. I have to make some room here on this one. All right, we made it work. Actually, come back and fix that. And remember, when at all possible, which is pretty much always, you never hook your straps onto your rub rail. It's called a rub rail for a reason. It's to prevent your straps from getting damaged. If you were to get sideswiped in an accident or rub your trailer up against a building or a cement barrier or something, that whole rail has to be free of your straps so that it can rub against things without damaging your straps. We've said this before. If you hook your straps up to the rub rail, someone comes alongside you, sideswipes you, or you rub up against a tree around a corner or something, and you snap all those straps off, boom, well now your load isn't secured. 
rub rails are not rated on any trailer. Every trailer that you that you hook onto has either pockets underneath where you can hook your hook into, or some trailers require D hooks where it's like a like a triangle. And then there's hooks that slide along or hooks underneath there that you hook that onto. There's always they, they don't make trailers at all, ever, that force you to use the rub rail to hook onto. Because I've heard this before where people are like, well, I have no choice. This trailer only has the rub rail. I have to hook it onto the rub rail and it's rated. No, 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 no. Your rub rail's not rated. That's not a thing. There's pockets underneath or you need to have different kinds of straps with the triangle hook that hooks onto those hooks. There's always a proper way of doing it. The rub rail is never a proper way of hooking on your strap. I see a lot of guys doing that. And honestly, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but I think that that's a little bit of laziness because it's very easy to hook it onto, right? Because sometimes the pockets are underneath my trailer and the hook has to hook up into it. But when you throw your strap over, your hook always wants to fall out of that pocket. And then you go around to the other side, you pull on the strap and oh, it's out of the pocket again. You got to go around the other side, put it in the pocket. Go back around the other side, it pops out. And, oh, it's out of the pocket again. And it wastes a lot of time, gets very frustrating. If you just hook it onto the rub rail, oh, well, look at that, it stays there. You, know, you don't have to worry about it falling out of the pocket. I get it, I, I've been driving long enough that I know all of these little cheat tricks too. You're still gonna get dinged for it. <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. You wanna risk it? Go ahead. I know drivers all that have been pulled in for inspection and gotten a separate fine for faulty equipment for every single strap that was hooked onto the rub rail. And if you got a, a load with 12 straps and they're all hooked onto the rub rail, each fine is like $200. I think it was between $150 to $200 per strap, US. Let's say about $175 per strap. You have 12 straps, whoops. Plus each one of those is an at-fault faulty equipment, which could possibly give you demerits on your license or Go on your driver's abstract as faulty equipment. It doesn't explain what it is. It's just it says faulty. It, it, this can happen. All depends on the ambitions of your inspector. But it's always uh, before you pull any trailer out. It's always best to find out okay where is the pocket for the straps to hook into. I'll show you really quick on this trailer. See the pockets are underneath here, so your strap goes inside the rub rail, right? Inside the rub rail and hooks into this pocket right here. That's the pocket that's rated. You put your strap in there and then this one has these fancy little sliders. You slide this over your strap and that holds it in the pocket. Now the reason some guys just, you know, wrap it around onto the rub rail like that is because maybe they don't have these sliders or they don't realize they have these sliders. And they hook it into this pocket here and then they walk around to the other side of the trailer. And then by the time they get there, the wind is sort of flapped the strap around and this is falling out of the pocket and then they pull it on that side and the strap just pulls right out of here, right? It's very frustrating, very frustrating. Believe me, I've been there with you 100% over and over and over again. That's why these things are very handy. Some trailers, they'll have sliding hooks, in which case you need special kind of straps that we call them D-hooks. It's like I said, a triangle on the end and it like hooks onto the, the actual, like uh, a hook underneath here, hooks onto that. But if you do, Hook them onto the rub rail, I'm just warning you. Depending on your inspector, it could nail you. I've been told before many different kinds of stories, like when there's no other option, okay. I've been told other stories that there's no tolerance. I'm not an inspector. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. It all depends who you get. Just make sure you know your trailer before you go. Know before you go. I've always been told by inspectors myself that there are exceptions, common sense exceptions to most things like that. Like the rub rail I have now is actually a part of the trailer itself. So if there's no way for me to get a hook into that pocket, and the only way I can hook it on there is by wrapping it around the rub rail, and it's just one strap, it's not all of them. And I can show, it's obvious that that was the only way I could secure that strap on there and it's because that's exactly where the strap had to go over the freight. I couldn't put the strap anywhere else. That was my only option. People I've talked to said, you'll be okay. But I don't wanna say you'll be okay because then you're gonna not be okay and you're gonna be like, Sugar Josh, you said I'd be okay. 
I'll be saying, ah, I said I didn't know. I said I didn't know. That's just what I've been told by people I've talked to. And I keep hearing different stories, but I mean, rules are rules. It all depends on the ambitions. Like I said, I'm the guy who's inspecting you. But if you explain within reason, I mean, it is what it is sometimes, right? I don't want to tell you what to do or what not to do. I'm not a trainer. I'm not an educational YouTube channel. Don't come here how to learn how to do things just perfect because I'm learning every day too and I don't want to be responsible for you getting into trouble, okay? I'm just here to entertain you, share some tips, the things that I know, and things like this, regulations that I know of. But again, I'm always gonna tell you that I'm always open to being wrong and I'm always open to being corrected. I get things wrong sometimes. Double check it. Maybe your region or your country that you live in has different rules than here. Maybe I got it wrong altogether. That's what the comment section is for down below. Go down there, we can have a discussion about it there. If you can prove me wrong, I'll accept it. But I am gonna say that even if you can prove me wrong about this whole rub rail deal, because I am like 99.999% sure that, uh, that I think I got this right. But even if I was wrong, I would still, personally, I would still go above and beyond to make sure that every single strap that could be inside the rub rail is inside the rub rail because the fears that I've shared with you before. What if something happens and something rubs along the side of my trailer and now I got my whole load on my trailer unsecured? I don't like that thought in my head. I never want to have an at-fault accident or anything where it's my fault because I didn't tie my load down properly and now somebody got hurt or even worse died. I don't want to be that guy. So I'm just going to keep putting them inside the rub rail and keep telling everybody to do the same thing because I, I really feel that I know that that is the safer way of doing it. But again, comment section down below. We can have a conversation about it.
in Saskatchewan. They've redone this Petropass truck. So look at all that truck parking. Wow. Though they angled the parking spots backwards, you got to blindside it into every spot, really. Oh, I hate it when truck stops do that. You can tell the people who designed it aren't truck drivers. Shoot. Well, it's better than it was before, but uh, just a heads up, if you come to this new Petro Pass, North Battleford, you're gonna have to blindside it into a parking spot because that's the only uh, option you have there. Continue on this road for 136 kilometers. It's not that bad. I mean, they're diagonal parking spots, right? But. If you are building a truck stop and you're putting in diagonal parking, make sure that when the drivers are backing in, they're backing in their, on their driver's side, right? So if you're facing straight forward, that the nose of the truck is pointed to the left. You know, you know what I mean? Diagonal parking with the nose of the truck to the left. That's the best way to do it. Otherwise it's uh, gonna be a ripe with people backing into other people and trucks getting damaged. But uh, don't listen to me. I mean, I just drive the truck. Don't listen to me. We're gonna make it to Lloydminster at least tonight. I'm hoping to get past it to, uh, what's that town called again? There's, a, there's another Petropass truck stop up on the hill. You guys know what I'm talking about? Let's see if I can get you there. And that'll get me within an hour or, or two of my delivery in the morning. I just have to be at my delivery before noon, so I'll probably show up there around like 10. Hopefully we can get unloaded quickly, and then my reload isn't until the next day in Edmonton. So we'll have a little bit of time to mess around tomorrow, I'll catch up on editing some videos and stuff. Maybe detail the truck a little. Couldn't make it any further. That truck show took a lot out of me yesterday, so we made it to just before Lloydminster, Saskatchewan. So we're still on the Saskatchewan side here. I'm gonna call it a night. It's two hours to my destination from here in the morning. Oh, and I can do it in the morning. Better to get a good rest. And then all I gotta do is drive to Edmonton, down to the south side there to Nisku, and I don't reload until the next day anyways. So I just have a few hours to drive tomorrow and then I'll be sitting most of the afternoon and evening. So Not like I got a long ways to go. Oh, just go and make sure we're straight. And, oh yeah. I might need to move up a little bit. Oh yeah, I got some room here yet. Wanted to leave them enough room to get around the front of me. It's a nice truck. Uh, let's go see how far we're sticking out in the back then. 
Oh yeah, I see. Because they got this thing here. It's going to be hard for someone to come around and get into here. There's a scale house right over there. I don't like really sleeping at the scale house, but my body sure doesn't care where I sleep right now, as long as I sleep. So even though I'm tired, I'm still gonna walk around here and make sure that uh, I'm out of the way. Probably move forward just a little bit more, give them a little bit more space. It's a beautiful evening out. Oh, that's such a beautiful Peterbilt right there. Beautiful. Well, they can always go you know, around it there and then go in. They can do it that way too. They can figure it out. People are smart, right? They'll figure it out. Oh, I can't wait to hit that pillow with my face. So these are the six inch side window visors that I won in the raffle at the truck show yesterday. And they're gonna, they're gonna go on the outside, right in there and that film will come off and it'll be a nice chrome. Look a little different than that because obviously it'll be on the outside, but. Oh. It has 3M tape on it that you can just sort of stick it up in there. And it's supposed to stick, but I don't trust that. And I don't want it to fall off and fly out into traffic. Because if someone's driving a convertible and that bounces over their windshield, that's going to slice their head off right there. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I think everybody's heads should stay firmly attached to their bodies. That's just the way I like everybody to be. You too? Yeah. It's just, I think it's a lot better that way. So they have those holes in the side. I can screw them in. I brought some screws with me and you can actually like screw them in and secure them to the, to the door frame so that it definitely will stay there. Might do that tomorrow because we'll have some time. Like I said, oh, we'll see. I might continue this vlog tomorrow too toward delivery. I don't know. I just can't believe how tired I am. Like, man, I guess I really haven't been sleeping as well as I thought I have been. We're going to catch up tonight, though. I'm going straight back there to bed. Do not pass go. Don't collect $200. Nothing. No extra stuff. No video editing. No YouTubing. No Facebook. No Instagram. Nothing. I'm gonna plant my face right into that pillow, and I'm just going to give in completely and just drift off to sleep that's gonna be good i gotta stop talking so i can go do that if i see you in the morning i see you in the morning if not then thanks for watching this video today i appreciate it and we'll see you in my next one or in the morning